That's right. It's that time again. It's Wednesday night, so you know what that means. It's time for the Convene Communities Podcast. And no, we don't have Matt tonight, but we have Jeff. Jeff! Yes. Jeff's the savior. Yes. And Eugene. <laughs> and Eugene's the savior. I was going to say, that's it? Just Jeff? <laughs> well, it, look, you, you didn't give me time, man. You know, I'm not real quick, <laughs> if you will. Uh, yeah, we don't need Matt. Who needs Matt? Yeah, what's, what's this show about tonight anyway? I mean, come on. Well, I think we got a great show. We were just talking about all sorts of awesome things, and it all revolves around you, Doc. Oh, boy. It all revolves around you. That's Welcome, scary. everybody. Welcome to the Convene Communities Codpast. Cod, cod Codpast. I've already messed it up. Matt's going to be so mad at me. But who cares? <laughs> He's not here. doesn't matter. Uh, You're this fired. Is gonna be an awesome show. This is going to be an awesome show. We got uh, Andy Doc Barker here with us. Not only is he the producer of the show, I don't know if he's the wizard behind the curtain and behind the screen, but he's he's going to be telling us all about himself today. So that's pretty exciting. What about you? What do you think, Eugene? Yeah, I'm excited about it. I don't know really anything about the good doc, and uh, he's got a lot to offer, a lot to say, and uh, so it's all about him tonight, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so it'll be even more fun watching him produce the show and ask questions right? and try to come up with jokes and everything else all the same right, time. Right. I can multitask. Don't. Don't make me put the wig back on. Uh, no, don't put the wig. I'd, I'd <laughs> rather you put the UNC Chapel Hill football hat back on. I, I couldn't do that to my head. There's no way. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Thanks, fellas. Thanks for being here tonight. It's uh, it's always an honor. It's just kind of weird that it's about me tonight. So I'm kind of kind of freaking out in a good way. Um, I, I'm, I like being behind the scenes. I don't necessarily like being in front of the scenes. So this is, um, we'll get through it. Yeah, you're going to be awesome. So, well, let's start it this way, Doc. Tell us about yourself. Where'd you grow well, up? What, what were you like as a kid? I like long walks on the beach. Uh, nice. Oh, wait. Um, dang. I, I couldn't, I, I was really trying to get through it without being a smart ass. I couldn't do it. Um, no, be yourself. So I, uh, I am the son of a retired uh, Coast Guard warrant officer. Um, so growing up, every two years we moved my whole life. So I've been attached to military in one way or another, basically since I was born. Um, I was just shy of a year, uh, year old when my dad got to really truly meet me for the first time because he was in Vietnam. Um, so... Uh, we moved everywhere. You know, I've lived in many, many states, Cleveland, uh, New Jersey. We lived in New York, Alabama, uh, Texas. Um, you start naming where you haven't lived. It, it's probably easier. Um, wow. So growing up the way I did with my dad being being an old salty warrant officer, um, life wasn't always easy. Life was very, he was very strict. Um, so growing up, we didn't have the greatest relationship, especially in my teenage years. And when we moved here to St. Louis, uh, it was, I guess, 1983. So the year after the Cardinals won the World Series in 82. That's how I remember things. It's crazy. Um, Sports dates. Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, so going through high school here, I, I was uh, full of myself like every teenager is and thought I knew everything, which I didn't. So my relationship with my father was, um, it was kind of a rough one. And uh, after I joined, I knew from a very young age that I, I was going to join the military. So after I joined, uh, I realized that, well, he was right. I was wrong. And uh, I swallowed my pride. And, and we had a, an amazing relationship from that point on. Um, yeah. More, it was really more friends than father and son. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I joined the Navy. I joined the Navy at 18, right out of high school, and uh, left and never looked back, man. And uh, I know we talked a little bit prior to the show starting. Somebody asked why the Navy. Yeah. So I joined the Navy because I wanted to be a SEAL. Um, okay. Didn't know how to swim, but that was, wasn't worried about that. I knew if, if you want something bad enough, you'll, you'll get it, right? Right. Well, I joined the Navy, and the next thing I know, I'm getting attached to a Marine Corps unit. Not 
what I anticipated, not what I wanted, but it ended up being the best time of my career, hands down. It, uh, Hold on, Doc. I, I don't know what that means because I don't. I don't have that military background. You said you're in the Navy, but you're attached to a, uh, a, a Marine unit. What's that mean? Great point. Um, thanks for asking that. Yeah. So the Marine Corps falls under the Department of the Navy. Therefore, right. they don't have an independent medical, dental, chaplain components, uh, things of that nature. So they basically take those components from the Navy. So I'm in the Navy, but I'm serving with a Marine Corps unit. I follow their regulations and do everything that they do um, in addition to taking care of them when they're sick or they're hurt, they're injured, whatever the case may be. Mm. It's, um, it's fantastic. And the reason I, <clears throat> the reason I still go by doc to this day is because that is a title that's earned and not given. So if you're yeah. ever, if you're ever with a Marine unit and you see one of the Marines call their, they're corpsmen. Corpsmen, that's a problem. Oh. That means there's no trust. Mm. Uh, and yeah, doc is a title that's earned. It, it's uh, it's revered amongst amongst the Marines, especially the infantry Marines, you know, because you are you are on the front lines with them. You're doing everything that they're doing. You're the lifeline if they get hit. You know, mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to get them to that next echelon of care to save their life. So it's a very strong bond. Sure. Um, and uh, it's, it's, I have I have Marine brothers that well like Matt you know I'll, I will never there's nothing I wouldn't do for him I'd drop everything at a, at a heartbeat if one of my brothers said they needed something and I'd be on yeah. the road yeah but, I've, I've heard that a lot from the military I mean Eugene you even speak to that with uh, with the army side of it as well yeah you know it's a little bit different I didn't serve like a long long time like Doc and Matt I just did five years but uh you know, the camaraderie and the brotherhood of the military uh, reaches far and wide with a lot of folks. So my father was in the military for years as well. So certainly can relate to your story. The question I have, Doc, you obviously then were a medic in the military. What yes. You? Okay. Yeah. Wanted so Corman, yeah, Corman is just a, uh, another word for medic. Now, <laughs> most Corman will get very upset if you call them a medic. Because there are there are differences there. The training number one is different between a corpsman, just a basic corpsman, and a your standard um, army medic. Because correct me if I'm wrong, Eugene. There there's so many. It's like corpsmen are jack of all trades, and I think in the army, if I remember correctly, as a medic, you have to have a certain MOS to be able to do certain things. Is that correct? Yeah, it's usually the way it works, and I'm not familiar with the Navy's terms, so. I just wanted for the audience to for you to take a deeper dive into it. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's amazing. You get uh, fourteen weeks of basic hospital corpsman school, and then you move on to um, field medical service school. They actually call it uh, what do they call it nowadays. They change it. It's um, field medical training battalion, and there's an East Coast and a West Coast school, and so it's uh, it's a seven week course. They basically go in and teach you how to wear a Marine uniform, how to patrol, how to hike, um, in addition to a lot of your, your field medicine, uh, ex expedient, um, you know, dressings, how to, how to save a life, how to do cricothyroidotomies, um, airways, and all that stuff. And it's, <laughs> it was awesome. I, I loved it. So you're telling me that you had 21 weeks uh, basically medical training you said 14 weeks and then seven weeks basically and and then and then you're right out in the field if you need to be oh yeah wow. it's uh it's like drinking through a fire hose yeah, it really is apparently um wow that is crazy so in addition to that uh i did i guess i had about eight years in when i decided to apply for a school called independent duty corpsman school and essentially what that school is, is you are just that independent of a medical officer. So they train essentially like a physician assistant minus the uh, geriatric and pediatric components. So, uh, and then you go on either small ships, submarines, uh, with, back with the Marines, CBs, uh, any kind of independent platform that's small enough where they won't put a doctor that's where an, an independent duty corpsman goes. So I did that for 10 years. Um, I served, it was funny, I went, to, I went to school, I graduated, and I went right back to the very same infantry battalion I was with 10 years prior to that. 
Wow. And uh, so that, that was just that was cool. Chance? Yeah, yeah. I had it's uh, that's why they call them orders. You know, they're, they're not want tos; they're orders. Um, yeah. yeah. Huh. Eugene knows so, what I'm talking about. So you mentioned boat and, and navy and ten years. So what's it like to be? Have, were you in? A, you said at one point you were in a submarine. Was that right? Correct. Yeah. So how, how long were you in a submarine? And and tell me what that's like, because you know I've only been on one in a you know museum and a ship you know shipyard or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. So it's funny. I went from an an infantry battalion, and my buddy Ron's in the room. He's he's. I'm sure he's laughing at all this. Um, what up, Ron? Uh, yeah. So I went from an entry battalion to a submarine, and I had a very hard time adjusting. Okay. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't the confined space. It wasn't the work. Uh, I'll be completely honest when I say it was the attitude. Hmm. Submariners think they're so special. They get told from the very beginning when they come to the Navy how special they are. And there's a, a very incredible history of submarines, you know, dating back to the heroics that they did. But sure. nowadays, there's nothing special about them, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it was crazy because... Why, because the boats are so, the subs are so advanced? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're working, uh, they, submarines operate on 18, at least we used to operate on an 18-hour day. So you would spend six hours on watch six hours off doing your normal job and then six hours of sleep. Um, but you, you've got a, a rack to sleep in. You're not sleeping out in the weather. Nobody's shooting at you. You're getting four meal, not three, four meals a day. Cause we have something called mid rats. Um, and so that's for the, uh, the off going and oncoming midnight watch standards. They, they missed chow because obviously they're sleeping. So, um, the, just, just the attitude of, of thinking how special they were. And I just, I have to admit, I was kind of cocky back then too, but, you know, coming from, coming from one mindset for so long, I had 14 years with, with the Marine Corps and then going to a, to the Navy side of the house was very rough for me. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I didn't feel like I fit in, um, as a matter of fact, I, I almost got into a fist fight with my chief of the boat on cruise mess one day. Um, probably not good. No, it wasn't good. But uh, <laughs> again, you know, you put a type A personality and you get somebody trying to jump in your face thinking they're tough. And when they were completely wrong, uh, well, hell, I'll share the story. Why not? So I had a, uh, I had a, a sailor that was pretty sick and we were in port. And on Fridays around the fleet, submarine fleet, if a uh, submarine is in port, it's field day. And what field day is, it's not going out and having fun. It's cleaning up the boat. As we like to say, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, clean up the sub. But um, so the chief of the boat was a, um, let's just say he suffered from Napoleonic syndrome. Mm. He was about my height um, and just uh, was a bully, basically. He threatened the chiefs on the boat all the time with their fit reps and he, he put out a thing that said, on Fridays, no one leaves my boat because it's field day. No one goes anywhere until I tell them they can. Well, again, I had this sailor that was sick. I wasn't sure what was wrong with him. And it had been a couple of days. I went up and I told the XO and the, and the skipper that, hey, I'm taking so-and-so to squadron medical. They're like, okay. I went down. I let the Cobb know, chief of the boat. I said, hey, Cobb, I'm taking so-and-so to, to medical. He goes, he says, uh, you're not leaving my boat. Excuse me? He says, it's field day, Doc. Nobody leaves my boat. I said, well, first of all, I'm not asking your permission. I'm just having the courtesy to let you know I'm leaving. And again, you know, nobody's leaving my boat, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, I'm not going to argue with you right now because this individual is very sick. We can talk about it when I come back. Mm. So I walk out of the chief's mess. We go down. I'm taking the guy. We're going up the aft hatch. And the cop grabs my arm. He said, hey, Doc, I said nobody leaves my boat. Mm. And I looked at him. I said, Cobb, if you ever touch me again, I will break every bone in your freaking body. And uh, he was like, are you threatening me? I said, no, sir, that's a promise. I said, wow. fuck around, Oop, mess around, and find out. And uh, we'll go from there. So that was kind of the atmosphere I had to deal with yeah. on the wow. boat. 
Wow. So it made things very difficult. Yeah. The actual work itself, um, there's a lot of work because I was the sole medical provider for 140 people on that boat. And I wore several hats. I was not only the doc, but I was the radiation health officer, the gas free engineer, chaplain, mother, father, you know, you name it. Um, right. So I was busy enough throughout the entire time that it never affected, you know, I didn't have to think about how enclosed this space was or, or man, this sucks because I can't see the daylight or anything like that. It, there was enough to do. Hmm. Well, that's awesome, man. What a, what a story. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you got a thousand more stories like that. So Tons. That's, that's crazy. So I, you, you mentioned um, you wanted to be a Navy SEAL at the beginning. And uh, so when I was in college, one of my teammates um, went in after school, went to the Navy and he became a Navy SEAL. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and he was a uh, Tommy's and he was, um, he was a state champion wrestler in high school, big, strong kid. Um, just had, I mean, what, you know, wonderful personality, but also just that, like, don't mess with me personality when you needed it. Right. So I remember about, I don't know, two, three years after he graduated, I was coaching at the time at the same school and he came back for uh, alumni week, homecoming weekend, alumni weekend. And he brought like five or six of his Navy SEAL buddies. <laughs> and so we're out practicing and just from around the street, they all come run like they went on a big a run, right? So here they are, these these strong looking Navy SEAL guys, shirts off, running in, and we're just kind of looking like, oh my gosh, it's Tommy, sort of thing, right? So, um, you know, we we caught up a little bit, and that's you know, I said, hey, you know, I'll catch up with you in a, in a little while. And he goes, well, actually, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. And I said, oh, you're going back home? He goes, no, I'm 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 leaving, and but he couldn't say anymore, right? Right. And um, his, he had an older brother on the team, Paul, who, who I became good friends with. And about a year later, I just said, Paul, you know, I haven't, haven't heard from Tommy or seen Tommy lately. And he goes, I don't know where he is. And he goes, he goes, I know he's alive, but I don't know where he is. And this was probably early 2000s, right? So there's a lot going on in the Middle East and around the world. And, um, uh, you know, fast forward a number of years, um, caught up with him again, probably, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. And he had since um, uh, left the, the Navy SEALs program, left the Navy. And um, you know, I don't know any of the details, but he had a really hard time apparently after he left the military. Um, and all that he would say, and then his brother, same thing, is he just saw a lot of stuff. Yeah. And did a lot of stuff, right? And yeah. that's all he will, he'll say. But now he's living out, um, out west. I see pictures of him all the time, but um, it took him a long time to get through the rehab, if you will. And, and I don't even know if he went to rehab, he may have, but I just say sort of the rehab of, of becoming, um, you know, uh, I guess a civilian again. So um, I know you you had not the same circumstance and, and all that, but tell me about or tell us about you exiting the military in that transition. Sure. Yeah. It, real quick, I will say, because I'm sure people want to want to know. I actually never went to Bud's Basic Underwater Demolition School, SEAL School. OK. Uh, I found um, had a really good friend of mine. I'll just call him Mike who was a, um, a reconnaissance corpsman, um, a Marine recon, which is the, uh, the, the Marine Corps equivalent of a SEAL team or special forces, if you will. And it took a long time for them to get accepted into uh, special operations command. However, I found that and I did that. Um, so it was, it was very rewarding. Um, I ended up dropping out of uh, one of the schools due to an injury. And I should have went back, but I never did. And, and that's one of the, the great regrets I'll, I'll have to deal with the rest of my life. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's many we reasons. We all have yeah. regrets that, yeah, wish we would have done something else. Yeah. Many reasons as to why. But anyway, um, before I get to exiting the military, when I did, I put myself through school, became a, uh, a nurse. So I was commissioned in the Navy Nurse Corps. I did that. I was an uh, ER trauma nurse for the last 11 years of my career. Um, and then, uh, when my dad got sick, I took a humanitarian transfer back to St. Louis mm -hmm. and, uh, I took care of him for the last year of his life. Mm -hmm. So, um, wasn't in the plan, obviously no one ever plans for that kind of thing, but, uh, you know, things always work out in a way that's uh, meant to be. Sure. So, uh, I ended up retiring here and, uh. It was, I'm still struggling, 
today. I retired in 2001. Um, so, you know, two and a half years ago, and I still struggle with, with my identity, finding out who I am, what is my place, where do I belong? Because, you know, for 32 years, I wore the uniform and, and taking right. that off for the last time was just like taking my identity off. Yeah. So, and, and being here in the Midwest, you know, there's, there's not much Navy here. In fact, there's not a lot of military in general. So I struggle daily to find someone that I can kind of relate to. Uh, in, it, in addition to, um, you know, dealing with, with PTSD, I had a TBI, uh, 100% disabled. And, and I don't say that as a, a, for pity, I don't use it as a crutch, but I found that the more I talk about these things, the better I heal. And, uh, and if I can help somebody else heal in that process just by talking about it, well, then that's what life's all about. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't work. I am fully retired. Um, well, I won't say I don't work. I, I don't have a yeah. job. Let's say I was that. I just going to say that. Okay. Right. You're working, you're working on this right now. Right. Yeah. And, plus some other stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later. And and I love it, man. I, I love yeah. doing this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Alma sitting right there with you. She's she's on her bed. <laughs> my my dog moved from underneath my feet to the door. So something's going on outside. She, so my my uh, my family's over at the in laws right now, and so she's playing protector right now. So I, that's what I got going on. <laughs> uh, Ron Ron injects in the room. Uh, I haven't had a job since he's known me, and I've known Ron <laughs> since she's uh, probably ninety one, ninety two. Or work, he says. But well, I mean, I, I learned from the best. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, there you go. Have some of that, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> right. So, um, so let's transition to convene and, and what you are doing now. Yeah. Right? So yeah. perfect. I yeah. uh, I met Matt um, doing podcasting. Shocking. There you go. And uh, so he we got on board and we talked and and uh, he told me all about convene and. And uh, the cult that I mean the uh, the wonderful platform that it is, uh, and it's it's been fantastic getting to know and and uh, you know understand David Corre I mean Matt, um, but anyway, uh, How many yeah. People will not understand that uh, no. correlation. There, yeah. That's all right. That's funny. That's so, okay. Yeah. So sometimes so you, you have to leave a through, little mystery there. Yes, right. You met Matt through podcasting. What 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 podcast was this? I don't even remember? remember. I think it was Joint Task Force Twenty Two to Zero. Okay. Uh, I think that's what it was. Okay. But I don't remember. You know, I don't know what I had for breakfast, let alone you know, four or five years ago. Um, yeah. But anyway, I we just we bonded right off right off the bat. You know, even though he's a, a nasty pilot, um, you know, we won't take that away from him. Yeah, well, but he's gonna have a job. Right, right, right. And somebody's got to, you know, take the Warriors to where they need to fight. But, uh, right. oh, right. God, I hope he's listening. Please. Really if hope not, he's he'll listening. listen to it later. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so initially it was, hey, um, he told me about the, the conference, and I offered, hey, why not come down and, and video for you? Right, right. So so yeah. I did. So um, what, what people might not know, or some people might not know, is the conference he's talking about is Convene 23. So we had a we had our first uh, ever Convene, uh, really, convention uh, here in Winston-Salem, uh, February, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. remember, yeah, February. And uh, it was a great event. Um, Eugene, Eugene was one of the keynote speakers and, and highlight speakers. And um, it was a great event. I thought it was awesome. We had um, a number of people come up and talk about convene and why convene and why they chose convene and doc if i remember you had well no at least two but did you have three different camera stations up yeah we had thing? three three cameras up yeah. um yeah it was yeah. it was really tell, cool yeah i was gonna say tell us about that from your perspective you know from i don't want to say the outside looking in but kind of that almost a bird's eye view of, of what what that was all about yeah, well, that's almost exactly what it was because I really didn't know a lot about Convene at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so being kind of that outside guy just filming, it was um, very, very educational, but super powerful and super moving. Listening to everyone's stories. Um, I, I was, 
wasn't expecting that. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I found everyone there was just so genuine. Everyone had a share, uh, a story to share and a purpose mm -hmm. behind what they were doing. And, and that's the cool thing about Convene is that there are just so many different avenues that people can be involved in. Right. It's, it's fascinating. Um, yeah. So that kind of, uh, I kind of got bit by the bug a little bit at the right. conference. Well, I was yeah, saying that uh, you uh, certainly did your part, uh, Doc, and we certainly appreciate it. Doc drove from Missouri yeah. all the way to the Carolinas to, to spend all that time with us and really was compensated in the form of room and board and maybe some meals. So, you know, the work that you do with us and the work that you will be doing helping people with podcasts and shows are certainly invaluable to us. So we certainly appreciate it. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, kind of what you offer for those that may be interested in doing their own show. So certainly yeah. thank you for making that long trip, Doc. It uh, was good. Oh, it was yeah. my pleasure. And, and you know, when you've got something like this platform, that's doing such great things. It's super easy to make that choice and saying, you know what? I'm on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, before we get into the podcasting part, I want to, I don't know if I want to backtrack a touch, but, um, wounded warrior umpire Academy. Yes. Yeah, Matt was, uh, that's not, I thought maybe that's how you and Matt connected originally. No. Um, okay. Well, well, tell us about, for those that don't know, it's an awesome organization from what I've known. And there, we, have, we have that group in uh, the umpiring community mm -hmm. of, uh, for it. But tell mm -hmm. us about the Wounded War Empire uh, Academy. So let me preface it by saying Matt is the one that talked me into going to this. I didn't want to. I had no desire to be a baseball umpire. Did um, you ever play baseball growing up? I played baseball. Okay, um, yeah. But uh, no desire to be an umpire. Um so he talked me into going, and, and I did. And what the Wounded Warrior Umpire Academy is, it's a nonprofit organization that takes veterans that are wounded, whether it's physically, mentally, or ill, teach them how to be an umpire. Mm -hmm. And we use umpiring, and we use baseball as a conduit to basically get our veterans back to a sense of purpose, help them assimilate back into the community, give them... Uh, a trade, if you will, you can make really good money umpiring. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most importantly, it's to get back that camaraderie, that brotherhood and that sisterhood. And what is really, I think the highlight of the entire organization is that we have a, um, a period of instruction throughout the week. It's a 10 day course and we call it SDI time. And what that is, is essentially something that we stole from Marine Corps boot camp. You have a senior drill instructor in Marine Corps boot camp, and SDI time is senior drill instructor time, where that senior drill instructor will take off his hat, his campaign cover, and he'll sit down, and they will have basically, all right, it's time to be man-to-man, -man, man to woman We're having serious talks here. We're not playing games. And uh, so we took that model, and we use it as peer-to-peer -peer counseling. Um, and we've, we've done some outstanding work over the last three years, uh, we've saved, I can tell you, at, at a minimum, two lives this past year. Wow. Um, so, and uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed uh, at by all. Having those, by having them join the, the academy and become umpires. Yes. Wow. Because, again, it's, you know, baseball is the excuse. Yeah. We're teaching a skill, but we're really out there for the veterans. Right. Um, it saved my life. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so I was so moved by it that um, I wanted to do whatever I could to help out the organization. So I'm, I'm now a board member um, and uh, I will push it as long as, as it exists because I have seen firsthand the good and the lives that it has saved. How many empires are uh, part of the association now? Uh, we have, uh, geez, we're coming up close about 200 alumni now. Mm, wow. Uh, and are they, are they, where are they mainly located? Cause I know that the, at least one of the, um, I don't know, academies or the weekends or whatever was out on the, on the East coast, maybe South Carolina. Is that what I heard? Yeah. So we rotate spots every couple of years. Okay. Um, the last two years we were in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Okay. We have been in, in South Carolina. There's been a, a course in Colorado, um so it's all over yeah uh and we try to spread it out make it easier 
um, sure. for folks to get there. Now, here's the great part about this organization. Like I said, it's a nonprofit organization, but the individuals that attend, their flights are paid for, their hotels are paid for, their food is paid for, and they get about $1,500 worth of brand new umpire gear donated to them by umpatire.com. Wow. So it's 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 such an amazing program. Yeah, it is. yeah. I played baseball growing up. I played two years in college, and and uh, I remember, you know, in high school and college summer, you know, I, I was an umpire a little bit a couple of times for little leagues, <laughs> and, and and I've been a coach my whole life, so I've, I've I've heard not from a well from a coach's perspective, but man, people get so upset at balls and strikes. People get so upset about the close calls at first or second that they can't even see. Like they have no idea. Right. <laughs> it's amazing. So I, I can, it, maybe you can speak to this. I can only imagine that um, the temperament to be a successful umpire probably has a good e- equivalency with the temperament of a, of a good soldier, of a good military person. I, I would, I would agree with that. Um, it, the nice thing about uh, one of my disabilities is my hearing. So if I got my back to the, the crowd, I can't hear what they're saying, which is nice. Right. Doesn't matter if you're blind or not. They can't. You can't hear right. anyway. Yeah. Yell all you want. I don't care. Um, you know, it's funny. I joke about that, but at our, our plate meeting at the beginning of the game, before the game starts, I tell the coaches, "Hey, listen, I'm hard of hearing. I'm not ignoring you. If you need my attention, get it." Right. Because I was accused of ignoring a coach one game, uh, yeah. and I just couldn't hear him. And he was right. irate. He's sure. jumping up and down, and I finally saw him. And he, he comes out and he's he's wanting to get into my rear end. I said, listen, man, I'm not ignoring you. I can't hear you. Right. And uh, he goes, well, I don't believe you. I said, I'm a disabled veteran, man. I can't uh, hear you. Use your big boy voice and we'll talk, okay? And then he's got nothing to say. Oh, right. right. And he's like, all right. And then he went back and I, I addressed his issue and we and we handled it fine. And, and the game moved on. Yeah. Well, so. I'm sure Matt may have told you, but you need to ask Matt about his umpiring. Um <laughs> is umpiring what maybe a year or two ago he ended up getting out of it just for time's sake but he would tell me some of these stories of some of these high school coaches man I, it's amazing so anyway so so i think it's both thanks for your service for your service and thanks for your service as an umpire because <laughs> neither of them are easy right it's uh, it's difficult but you know I, I do like doing the high school level simply because you can get on any social media platform now, and you can see the abuse that these umpires are taking. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous. There's no need for it. Um, it's a no. game. Parents, right. and it's always, almost always the parents, yeah. uh, which is ridiculous to me. Yeah. Way, yeah. way to set that example. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, as a coach, especially going in, when I, when I transitioned out of college into high school, one of the first things I said to the parent group was don't be those parents. Right. And, and I had a little bit of, of, um, you know, kind of stick with them because I, I was, I actually recruited at that high school a number of times and I knew some of these parents, some of these kids. Mm-hmm. And I just said, look, I've been here. I've heard it. I said, no more, just sit there on your hands and keep your mouth closed. If you need to go yell, go in the car and scream and then come back. So, right. Yeah. And to the credit, they've been great, you know, so, but uh, yeah, it's, it's well, you know, gig. at the high school level, there's, there's, um, there's more for these guys to lose. And that's both the players and the coaches. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're held um, responsible by their athletic directors as they should be. Yeah. So, you know, if they get thrown out of a game, well, then they get a game or two suspension right. and, yeah. and who wants that? No, so, does. Um, no. and yeah. the nice thing, at least here in Missouri, the way it works is that if, if a fan gets ejected, that coach gets ejected as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, that's, um, uh, well, that's, that's some high stakes. I've had a couple games where I've had fans, parents that were, were being ridiculous. And I went over to to coach and I told him, said, listen, you handle it or I do. Right. Because they know they're, they're, they're gone too. Yeah. Yep. So, well, good for you. So that's, uh, that's quite a couple of good services there. So, but, um, well, you're also doing, you just started a podcast. Well, you, you're in the podcast community now, right? I Correct. Think we had it, we brought it back because of you. Correct. And obviously you're doing podcasts and, um, it's as Eugene was saying beforehand, it, it's not easy. Everybody thinks they could probably do it, you know, and I should, <laughs> 
full disclosure, I shared you with my little setup here because our office downstairs is, is you know, got school stuff in it from the kids and all that. <laughs> so now right. I've got a, a ladder with the camera and a light over here. So, you know, everybody thinks they could be a podcaster. What do you say to that? I think everybody can be. Yeah. With a little bit of knowledge. Um, right. it's, it's not that difficult. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get, obviously. Sure. Um, I think the I, you know, I've been doing podcasting for about eight years now. And the hardest thing at first was to get over hearing my own voice. That's yeah. so tough. Uh, and I don't know why no one likes to hear their own voice. Right. Um, but you get used to it. And then, uh, it, See, for me, it's, 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 um, seeing myself. Yeah. You know, like trying to, trying not to look over here, but look over here. And then every once in a while you got to sit, you know, am I, am I doing something stupid? Do I, you know, <laughs> Well, I mean, for what it's worth, it's hard for me to, to look at you too. But um, <laughs> I set you, myself up. I knew you you totally yeah. did. But, uh, <laughs> I think podcasting can be easy, but you have to put a little bit of planning into it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know what you want to talk about. You can't you can't just come in and, and willy nilly and, and wing it. Um, right. That'll work for a little bit. But it won't. It, it's not enough to sustain a successful podcast. Yeah. So, what is enough? What what's what's the first basic that you really need? Not necessarily equipment wise, because I think equipment probably vary a little bit. But what's the first thing you need in terms of, I guess, experience or something like that for for successful podcasting? Well, you have to first come up with a platform that you want to talk about. Sure. Um, you, if you jump into it before that, done. what's that? Which is easier said than done. Yes. Um, and, and, and I caution folks, you know, try not to make it such a, um, such a niche item that you'll run out of things to talk about in a month or two. Right. So, uh, and, and, you know, I've learned, through a lot of trial and error, I, I did that. I had a podcast that I started called Throwing Down with Andy, and it was all about martial arts, judo, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And it was fun, but you can only talk about that stuff for so much, you know? And, right, right. Uh, and I found myself wanting to talk about different subjects, and that just wasn't the right platform. Mm. So that's why I came up with the Nothing's Off the Table platform. Now we can talk to anybody about anything and, and still have a good time. Yeah. Um, what's the best nothing or nothing's on the table? What would you just say? Nothing's, nothing's off, off the, the table. table. I said on. Nothing's off. What's the best episode so far? Uh, it would probably have to be the episode that I did with retired Navy SEAL Don Shipley. Mm -hmm. um, we've got close to 50,000 views on it. Wow. Um, awesome. And it was it was just a fun interview. It was like uh, he's he's an old retired senior chief. I was a chief at one point, and just just like to me, it felt like two chiefs sitting at the chief's mess in a bar, swapping stories. You know, it wasn't it wasn't really an interview. It was just two old goats telling lies. I mean, uh, telling stories. <laughs> and where can people find that? Uh, it's more. on YouTube. On uh, nothing's off the table. Our our YouTube channel. Um, and it's uh, it, it was a great episode, but I was still pretty new to podcasting at that point, and so the audio wasn't the best. Mm -hmm. But the interview, the content was really good. Yeah, if that makes maybe, any sense. Maybe you need to take your podcast to an actual bar, right up on the bar, and well, we could do that. I, I have uh, I have gone mobile. We did a one mobile two years ago. We did a Halloween show, and uh, uh -huh. we we did it at a place called Mineral Springs Hotel, which is in Alton, Illinois, and it's supposed to be like the most haunted location around. The only thing haunted that night was our podcast, but um, <laughs> didn't go well. Uh, it went okay, oh. but uh, you know it was on location, so we we had some folks. I just won't say anymore. Um, <laughs> no, I'll leave sorry. it at that. Right. So your your podcast group then in in or community. What's your goal with the podcasting community and the group? Um, I know I'm looking forward to following it, taking the experiences and everything else. 
So my goal for the community is it's kind of twofold. Um, number one, I want to offer my services to anyone that would like me to produce their podcast. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that because as you guys know, whenever we're doing a show that's not focused on me, I'm constantly in the background. I'm, I'm making sure different things are going, uh, getting slides ready, putting slides up, transitioning to this, transitioning to that, following the chat room. Um, that's that's a lot. And yeah. uh, for somebody who just wants to come on and put their information out and do a show, I'm your guy. I take care of all of that. I take care of where it streams to, you know, we put it up on, on an audio platform if you want as well. Um, and I don't even have to be on the camera. I can be in the back of the, uh, behind the scenes, if you will, and I'll still run yep. your podcast. Yep. The second thing, the uh, goal that I have is I want to teach people how to podcast, how to get started. What, what equipment should they start out with? You know, platforms, how to go about setting things up, um, should it be a weekly show? Should it be, you know, more than that? Should it be a monthly? All these things that um, come into play, I, I would like to be able to help people figure out what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eugene, I've, I've monopolized a lot of the questions because they just keep popping in my head. So, and, and I can tell you have one before, but before that, um, speaking of you wanting to help people with the podcast, they can also help you with the podcast by the little donate button up in the uh, up in the corner of the screen there, right? So if you guys um, feel compelled, uh, dollar, two dollars, whatever you want, ten dollars, hundred dollars, you choose. But Doc does an unbelievable job. Uh, we started, restarted, I guess, the podcast a little over a month ago, and just the um, the ease. I guess it's almost two months ago now, but the ease as to which. Um, for me to jump into the, the room, you know, mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes beforehand, have the chat, have the talk. This is what's that. I mean, doc, you, you just take care of it all behind the scenes and does an unbelievable job. So well, thank anybody you. that wants to have a podcast contact doc, but also, like I said, use that, uh, use that donate button up in the corner there. I appreciate that. And my goal is to make it as flawless as possible, as seamless as possible for you guys. You jump on and, and you do the show and I take care of everything else. Yeah, and you do. That's that's the goal. Yeah, and where do where are they gonna find you, Doc? Can you hear me? Okay. What? Can you hear me? <laughs> Say again. <laughs> no, look, I plug this this little <laughs> speaker in because you, you, your voice and your equipment is so much richer and clearer. And I thought, well, if I plug it in, I'm not even sure if it's coming through differently than normal, but. Uh, that's some of the things that you teach people, you know, from an equipment standpoint, a setup standpoint, the value of doing a podcast to, to brand yourself, to, you know, to, to market yourself, obviously, to monetize your your audience, all of that you'll you'll get into. Yes. Yes. OK. Do I sound any differently with the speaker on testing? No, no. You have to actually turn it on, though. Yeah, okay. it's uh, see, you, you don't normally talk into speakers, it's usually this thing called a microphone. Is this not a microphone? <laughs> you said it was a speaker, I'm going with what you said because oh, I believe you and I trust you. Uh, yeah, so where sure would they you? find you? Go ahead, like they're gonna find you in convene, under yes, the podcast community, in yes, the community or where. So there's there's a couple different areas that you can find me at. Um, I am actually I have a group under uh, the Troubadour Media Group, and that's my Mad Sis Productions uh, group, and and uh, we do a lot of video production and, and things of that nature. But I also uh, have a couple other areas. Um, we just started a. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm remiss for not remembering the proper title, but it's it's an outdoor adventure group. Um, adventure community. Yes, the adventure community. Thank you for. Uh, that's what that's, I was going to talk about next. I love it. It's one of my issues. Uh, again, I have I have a lot of memory issues and and things I want to say. I know what I want to say, but I I can't get the words out sometimes, and it's very frustrating. So, thanks well, for the backup there. Uh, I resemble that remark, so don't worry about it. I do the same. But anyway, yeah. So yeah. Uh, what I do on the adventure group or the adventure community is I. I go camping a lot. I love being in the outdoors yeah. and I do a lot of product review videos. So, yeah. um, and they're, they're pretty honest. Uh, if it's a piece of gear that's 
not worth a crap, then I'll I'll tell you straight up and uh Right. It's probably why I don't get sponsored by anybody, but you know. Nah. Um, Soon you will. I, I love that community. It, it, it was something that um, so a couple of years ago. I, I, I love. I've always loved camping. My parents were uh, were teachers, and so we we're fortunate enough to be able to travel in the summer. And so I, I just remember as a kid, we we'd have um, our luggage was the old Stroh's beer box, bottle box, <laughs> like really yeah. like durable ones, right? And that was it. That's what we packed in. My brother and I got one of those. We just packed our stuff and we, we hopped in our our, uh, our Ford excursion van and, and went all over the country. And it was awesome. And um, that's where I really fell in love with, with camping. And then just recently, you know, we used to go camping with, with my girls and tent camping. And uh, three years ago, we bought a, a camper. And um, before they really start getting too old, a couple of years, summers ago, we decided to take a big trip out west. Uh, went up, we drove out to Denver, up to Estes, up to um, um, the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone, all the way back to the Badlands and back. And it was an, it was an awesome trip. So that's what we started talking about the adventure community. And my my daughters still have the plan to start raiding or do like a like a little campground raiding uh, from a, from a kids. Well, they're not kids anymore, but from a, from a non adult standpoint, you know, is it good? Does it have good kid friendly stuff and playgrounds and pools and all that sort of stuff. So they're still working on that, but you know, you doing the, um, the uh, product rating, it reminds me of those, those kids that, that are on YouTube and they, they unpackage all the gifts and then the toys and they play with it. Um, how fun is that for you on the camping side of it? Unpackage something and then get to play with it all weekend. Well, I mean, I'm a big kid at heart, so of course it's a blast, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's fantastic. It, it it is. It's it's a lot of fun. I've had um, I've had some really good comments. Um, people have made some good comments on on the yeah. reviews. Yeah. Some of them, uh, you know, whatever. But right. uh, so the, the the difference then with these kids. Uh, well, there's a lot of differences, but these, you know, these people unpackaging things and showing it on YouTube and just mm-hmm. the video, and then YouTube you have the comments. The difference with convene though is it's similar. You have the you have the product, but you can actually have a write-up of the entire project product in the background and put whatever it is you want in it. Have your video, maybe of you opening it up and using it. And in the comments section, it's not just one way, right? Right. It's back and forth, right? So yeah, so absolutely. You had a couple of good comments. Tell us about that. Well, I just had uh, well on the YouTube, not so much in Convene because the Convene is it's uh, you know I just built it. Yeah, still growing. So. Um, but I've had some folks basically make comments. Hey, you know, I've been back and forth on this particular product. Thanks for doing a review on it, um, or, or something to the effect that, well, with your review, uh, I know I'm not going to purchase this particular item. I've been looking at this one over here anyway. So yeah. well, just things like you, that. Yeah, and if you want, you can you can go back to them, right? You know, yeah, I, you can in YouTube, but you, no one just really does. It's generally just people making comments. But Convene's built for the fact that you can then go back and respond to them. You know, maybe even engage them on, you know, you didn't like this product. I didn't like it or what, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't like it. You said you won't use it. You're going to go to this other product. Well, hey, what's the product you're going to use? Right. Right. Now they tell you, maybe you do a review on that. One. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, in, within the experience themselves, I, I'll put the video up there and then I'll, I'll have questions, you know. Um, yeah. Hopefully, you know, folks will get on there and, and they can uh, they can gain some knowledge or just an experience out of the experience itself. See what I did there. And there you uh, go. yeah, you. Uh, are you uh, experience? I was say, are you giving them an opportunity to buy it? Are you an affiliate for any of the products that you're reviewing? Uh, I am. I'm working on that right now. I'm, I'm trying to get the Amazon affiliate thing going. Um, again, I know it's crazy sounding. It's It's not my goal. My goal is just, hey. Here's why I like this, or here's why I don't like it, and here's what I think you will like about it as well. Right. Um, right. So, well. But if I so make money at some point, then that's great. But uh, again, that's uh, that's not the goal. The goal is to put out a proper review. Yeah. Well, and I, I would, I'd wager to say that of all the people that are on convene or in our our circle, our main circle of people at the moment. But that's the prevailing thought is we're not here to, to primarily make money. Right. We're all here to primarily and, and 
and first and foremost, help others in some way, some capacity, whatever our genre is, right? Um, Eugene with stocks, you know, me with with um, soccer and teens and, you know, name the group, name the name the uh, the community and everybody's here to help first. Now, is there an opportunity and a very good opportunity to make money using convene? Absolutely. I mean, 100 percent there is. But, you know, our kind of belief, at least I know I'm speaking for myself, but our belief is that if we can put our content out there, we can put our thoughts and experiences out there. And we can help others eventually once it starts growing, then then the financial part will, will fall into place properly. Yeah. It sounds like you're really looking to do the same with both the podcasting and, and the adventure. For sure. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things I really like about Convene is is that everybody is here. It's it really is like a big family. And I I was joking earlier calling it a cult, but everyone here is here for others not just themselves and and that's what i like about it everyone is willing to help if you have a question they'll stop what they're doing and answer it for you it's just yep. it's just a, a wonderful it really is a family yeah 100 percent. well i'm looking at the, the comments and you got the first couple on here right now jody and, and lisa perfect example of people that want to help others and and the financial part comes comes later i mean you know we had both uh uh, Jody on last week and Lisa on the week before, and they basically said the whole same thing. You know, they're mm -hmm. here to help others first, first and foremost, and then the rest of it falls into place. So, and that's how you know it's a cult. Because <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's a def true definition, right? So, <laughs> well, look, we got we got about eight ten minutes left at the most, and I know we've really monopolized the, uh, the time, but I think it's just flown by. It's been been so much fun to to chat and catch up and hear your stories and. You know, hear your life experiences. But if anybody else has a question in there uh, or out there, I should say for for Doc, please uh, please type it in, and uh, yeah. we'll get to it here soon. So I might even um, give you an honest answer. I don't know. Maybe you will. So <laughs> here's my question. This is a rumor. Oh boy. Uh oh. Let me sit down tell for me, this one. Tell me if this you are. You're sitting down. Oh, okay. I, I think you're not that short, are you? Um, <laughs> yes, I am. But <laughs> I hear there's a potential future in comedy for somebody in the room here. Oh, I don't know if I'd say a potential future in comedy. I I have a list of things I want to do in my life before I before I uh, push up daisies, and and I want to do an open mic night. So. That'd be awesome. I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't have a desire to make a career in comedy. Uh, I just, it's one of those things I want to do. I'll, I'll like, either do well or I won't. Yeah. Do you, ha well, do you have think, uh, do you have material written out already? I do. As a matter, I, I am working on a routine. The thing I'm, I'm trying to find out through the local comedy stores here what their time is because every every place is different. They each have their requirements of, um, say, for example, one minute or two minutes or five minutes. So. Wait, one minute? What do you yeah. Do you, one minute? you just tell a knock that's, knock joke and you're done? It's crazy. So, you know what? I've really, I've gone down the rabbit hole. There's a, a, a live podcast every Monday night. It's called Kill Tony. And it's uh, hosted by oh. Tony Hinchcliffe, who's a stand up right. comedian. And what they do is they, they're at a comedy club in Austin, Texas, and they have usually about 200 people sign up, right? And they sign up to do a one minute spot. So he pulls names out of the bucket, literally. And whoever he pulls, they come up and they'll either bomb or they'll do really good for that one minute. And then after the minute, they interview him. And that's where a lot of the really, really funny stuff comes out. Interview him on stage, you mean? Yes. Yeah. So uh, it, I, I don't know, man. I've been down that rabbit hole. It, it's hilarious. But a minute is so hard. Just a minute, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. It, it, you, you're either going to go it, 10 seconds or you're going to go you're going to want to go two minutes right it, it's yeah. really difficult to write ex a one minute set uh, uh gotcha 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 yeah, yeah yeah that's crazy well who would who would you say is your uh who does it the best in comedy and i'll give you my uh my answer who, who, who do you who's your favorite comedian Ooh, that's a tough one because there's so many good ones out there um you know, you you can't go wrong with old school comedians like George Carlin and Richard Pryor, who who really kind of opened the door for a lot of people. Um, 
modern, you know, there's a new guy out there, two of them actually. There's a guy named Hans Kim. Mm -hmm. It's a funny name. He's a Korean guy. Yeah. Uh, he's he's on this show all the time, uh, the Kill Tony podcast. Uh -huh. Ironically, my wife and I about six, seven months ago went to a, to uh, the Funny Bone and he was headlining. And wow. that's the first time I'd ever heard of him. And he was hilarious. He slayed it. Um, and so More they bring him back every week. He opens the show. And so he has to write a new minute every week. Oh, and uh, Hans Kim. He's, he's hilarious. Um, there's another guy that I, I just recently discovered named David Lucas. And uh, he, God, he's so funny. His, his claim to fame is he's a roaster. Uh, he's, he's probably one of the best roasters I've ever seen. Um, just hilarious. And what I like about him so much is the way he laughs at his own jokes. Yeah. It's hilarious. His laugh is, is contagious, man. Right. So, yeah, I'll go with those two okay. for more you, modern. Well, I, I don't, I'm not a, a big comedy guy. I don't follow it, you know, to religiously watch it. I, occasionally when I feel like watching it, I'll turn on Netflix, but you know, mine is all time favorite is, is Dave Chappelle. I think oh man. So you know, I, I didn't smart. say him because it's so obvious. Oh, he, he he's the goat, man. He, he really is. He's, he's the so goat. good at telling stories within the comedy and then tie it all in to the end. And he, and he makes you think sometimes he, he's mm -hmm. just really good at what he does really is really good. Yeah. I've been listening to uh, Netflix as a joke on Sirius Radio uh, on the way down to school and back every once in a while. Man, there, there's so many good comedians out there, so many mm -hmm. good ones. So, but Doc, I, I got full faith in you, man. Especially your uh, your impressions. You're very good at impressions. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Especially um, one, we don't need to mention that one particular one at the moment. It's amazing. I know you miss him already. It's okay. <laughs> I'll be back. Don't worry. When I get out of jail, I'll come visit you. Um, yeah, hey, I don't talk about the Trumpster. <laughs> yes, we'll build the wall together. It'll be amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. Well, Doc, this has been uh, an awesome hour. Uh, I think so. Thanks, yeah, fellas. Think it was a great time. And I know it's it was a bit unconventional because, you know, we didn't have Doc behind the scenes pulling all the strings and, and doing everything. But I think it, I think it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, we really appreciate everything you're doing, not only for uh, for Convene and for us, but just, mm -hmm. just in general. I well, appreciate uh, being I appreciated. Have, um, yeah. So I'll, uh, Eugene, I'll let you um, have a few remarks and we'll, we'll let Doc finish it up for us. Yeah, I'd echo the same thing. Uh, we love what you do. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we look forward to helping you find whatever the niche is, obviously with podcasting and help you find success. I think it's important that um, you tell us how they can reach you, either a phone number that goes beyond the adventure community you want to share that or is there a link or you you know, later or as a matter of fact, if you see on the screen right now, it says call the show. That is my number. I know I'm breaking down a wall here. That's my number and you can use that to contact me. Also, if you want to send me an email, you can send me an email at doc, D O C Andy Barker, B A R K E R at gmail.com. Very good. All right, we'll certainly get that posted. Uh, look forward to hopefully doing some work with you. I've got a couple of uh, podcasts uh, in mind. One, one is called Human After All, and the other one, Complete BS. So uh, I'd like to get with you and talk about maybe how you can help me launch uh, yeah. a podcast or two. But other than that, we're glad you're here. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got to say tonight. Other than your ugly Florida State hat on. We'll, we'll <sighs> How dare you? Hurtful. Yeah. Hurtful. Yeah. Wait, uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold on. What, what, yeah. um, wh where are we at in the, in the standings right now? I don't know. Number, number one, number higher, one. Higher than, higher than Chapel Hill. Hate, hate all you want. Right, right, right. I think we're finally getting out of that whole free seafood university days. Thanks to Jameis Wilson, Winston back in the day. Sorry. But, uh, man, uh, I can't believe how fast this went by. It it's did. been a blast. I've, I've appreciated it all. I've had a great time getting to know some of your extra stories and, and uh, I'm really, uh, really appreciative of everything you do, doc. I, I can't wait to, to keep working with you. Um, I'll let you end it up, but uh, just to tell everybody, can't wait till uh, next week and see everybody next week. But Absolutely. 
I've got a lot to say. Um, I'm going to start, start it off by saying goodbye. <laughs>